Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Ash, and we're back here at Ashland, and we are going to be recapping episode two of Queen's Heart of a Queen, and to jump right on into it, this episode seems to be mainly about basically bringing it all in together, um, Figuring, fi fi finding out how they got together, how they uh, broke up, and all the middleness in between. So let's go ahead and jump at it. So we pick up right where we left off uh, with them right in front of the billboard, and they're talking about uh, the tour. And basically, you know, not wanting to go back to San Diego again and, you know, not wanting to relive San Diego. Jill has decided to, um, excuse me, not Jill, Brianna has decided to forgive um, her husband. Um, Jill, you know, has come out. Um, and uh, what's weird is, is uh, somebody's watching them from behind. You see somebody is uh, watching them. E-Rock comes up. He's clearly, you know, beat up or you know somebody po possibly punched him and uh you know the girls ask him you know what happened he's like you know it's not about me it's about y'all and then all of a sudden I guess this stalker person who's watching them I mean straight all black comes in boom pow 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 just start shooting and then boom we go in time in history we go ahead and rewind and we're taken back to San Diego 2001 and What's happening is, is they're at, you know, doing the performance in San Diego. We got a cameo from Cameron. He came out in his pink. So they, uh, they're performing or whatnot. Everybody's doing their own little raps, doing their thing, doing their little bop. Uh, when it's Butter Pecan's turn, Valeria, when it's her turn to rap, Naomi explains the lyrics uh, you can tell that she, clearly she feels some type of way. Like, she, her, she's giving these eyes. All of a sudden, like, she just gets lazy with her movements. She's having eyes with Jill. And all, basically, she ends up interrupting the show, like, how did we get here? What happened to us? This is over. Drops the mic and walks off stage. All right? So, boom. What happened, though, right? So, let's go ahead and jump back into that. So, when we jump back to the present, um... It's Brianna and her husband, and they are preparing for to go for him to go into surgery uh, for, you know, the cancer, the brain tumor that he has in his brain. And he passes her something, you know, like just like a just in case, uh, you know, I don't make it like type of thing. And um, all the while she had to get a babysitter. Mom, her mom couldn't babysit. So Valeria is the one that she got to actually babysit the kids while she is with him in surgery. And she's downstairs uh, doing yoga with the kids and gets a call uh from E Rock and E Rock is basically trying to secure venues for them or whatnot. He's basically saying, Well, I can secure something but it just may not be as big as you know, it just may not be as big and all else fails we might have to do San Diego and she just kinda reiterates how, you know, make something happen, make it work because we owe them, right? So um Jill and, you know, now that Jill's out, Jill and uh, her boo are, you know, are together and they're officially together. She's, you know, told her husband um, about them, uh, you know, basically coming out. Speaking of husband, they're, you know, they're in bed, glad to be waking up together. And all of a sudden, Jill smells bacon. Like, what is that smell? And lo and behold, her husband is in the kitchen cooking bacon. And it's just kind of like hitting him, like, what's, like... I love you, like, I love you, you love me, like, I, like, what can we do to make this work, or whatever, whatnot, so he basically suggests that they all be together, they all be in love, and Jill is like, honey, it's just not gonna happen, I care for you, but I am in love with someone else, and for a second, he was like, no, we can make this work, and she's like, nah, it's, it's really not gonna be that, I'm in love with this person, you know, I'm in love, not with this person, I'm in love with a woman, so this whole, this is not even going to be it no more, or whatnot, so she's dealing with that, Lil Muffin is in therapy, not working the therapy, she's worried about getting out, and you know, she just has that attitude, like, you know, I'm kind of like above y'all, I don't really need to be here, and um, so like, kind of like doing like a group setting, and the person that's holding the group, he's like, basically like, if you don't get your life together, and get this stuff figured out, 
you ain't gonna have nothing. You ain't gonna be nowhere, right? So, on the other hand, um, Naomi and JoJo looks like they're doing good. They're out having like you know like maybe like a lunch, dinner, or whatnot. And JoJo's just like, well, I'm so glad you know that you're here. I thought you know with um after the BT performance, it's probably gonna be a while before I see you. So just as they're talking about that, you know, and uh, Cameron pops back up i immediately ringers immediately start going off in my head because i'm like first off once they do the flashback the flashback all obviously left something open so i'm like okay cameron hmm oh we gonna see cameron again and boom we've seen him again and in the set with her daughter boom you think what i'm thinking is that her daddy so she sit t you know sits tells him to sit down invites him you know to, you know to have you know lunch dinner or whatever with them now i honestly thought that sister uh daughter was gonna get an attitude because like we barely got our time together and you invited some stranger that i don't clearly i don't even know to and you know come and enjoy this meal with us or whatever whatnot but she played it cool they start to order off the menu and jojo orders her food and cameron basically wants the same thing that she wants Oh, also, extra pickles too, please, both of them. So they looking at each other. Uh, Naomi's looking like, wait, what? She knew. She knew right then and there, if she didn't already knew. She knew right then and there. So also, basically, Cameron is also letting her know that her demo had fell into his lap, and he wants to sign her to, her, to his label. So he's like, you know... I want you to come out to L.A., let's meet some execs, and, you know, let's try to get this ball rolling. All right, right, so we're moving on back to Jill, and, you know, Jill's just trying to live a normal life after coming out, but unfortunately, her coming out is on, you know, the front page of her local newspaper. She's, you know, trying to go to church, but unfortunately, again, she's Catholic, and the parishioners are just turning their nose noses up at her, and even the priest uh um turned hit turned her away for communion because she uh was not free of sin so she's freaking out she leaves the church now she is being bombarded by reporters and paparazzi so she's it just in a whole nother whirlwind or whatever, whatnot. So we then end up taking another flashback into 1997, right? And it might have been 1998. It was 1997, 1998. And basically this is where, where the group first started. Before Valeria, exactly. There was just... Um, Jill the Thrill, Professor Sex, and uh, Explicit Lyrics. There was no Valeria. So they're performing, whatnot. Um, they got a exec out there being look, looking at them, trying to get them a deal. This particular exec was, seemed a little bit raunchy. He was, seemed like he was, as, hey, he was, because he was saying to um, E Rock, well, you know the business, you know how this goes, because he had made uh, some kind of com comment or reference to Professor Sex and how he was basically feeling her she was sexy or whatnot and she can come and look at the deal and his place is right up the road or whatever or whatnot. So that ain't going nowhere. Up comes Miss Valeria putting on the sexy seducing with her shady ass. Yeah, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to like her. I ain't going to, I don't like her. I don't like her. So basically she is i mean putting on the sexy putting it on on whole seduction mode basically you know saying that you know erog you're the person to know around right now but you need to know me and you know your group the group is fire i've seen them a couple of times but they still ain't got no deal and basically in order to get a deal they need me slides him her demo in slides the demo in his underwear at that right in his pants yes in his pants and walks off so go to the studio they are kind of all meeting together jill the thrill and professor sex are not with it they're like who is this why is this why are we bringing in somebody else are we not black enough because she definitely ain't black and just like just basically coming for her or whatever whatnot now she trying to come back or whatever whatnot trying to come back for them like basically yeah, y'all good, but ain't nobody gonna, you know, hear y'all. Like, given, um, given Naomi her props, but 
basically saying that, you know, either way it's not going to matter because nobody's going to know y'all. And she's like, oh, but you but you could get us there. Well, here you go. And she slides her some lyrics to what's going to be the number one song in the world, which was Nasty Girl. So, you know, with Nasty Girl, you know, it's a rudder gutter. You got to get a little raunchy, a little gutter, a little hard, a little with or whatnot. And it was a little rough in the beginning. <laughs> Jill the Thrill and Professor Sex looked at each other like, and yeah, that's what we thought. This ain't gonna work. But as she started to continue to say it, it started to flow for her and it started to sound good and boom. That's how the group became instead of a group of three, a group of four. So back to Jill. She's she's like, I need a break. I need to get back to LA. In the meantime, while she's talking about getting back to LA, E Rock is basically trying to get the same deal to get the same venue in San Diego or whatnot. But of course, he really ain't got the money for the loss because they, if they was to possibly take a loss or whatnot. While he handling that, when he ready to go, he get a call talking about Lil Muffet didn't escape from the Dern rehabil re uh, rehabilitation place. Ends up popping up at Jill's. Like, you're the only person I know in Montana. I need to get back to LA. So. Then I'm going back to L.A., um, Naomi goes back, goes to L.A., and, you know, she goes for the meeting with, uh, you know, with the execs, with Cameron. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, basically giving her props on her talent, but the music exec is basically like, I'm gearing you up to be a writer for somebody else, for this other artist who could use your writing expertise. Nah, that's not what she wanted. That's not what she came here. Even Cameron was like... That's not what we talked about. That's not the deal we talked about. And basically, the music exec basically called Naomi old and said, in order for you to be relevant, this is the lane that you need to be in as far as writing. And Naomi was like, bump it. I'm kind of just over it. I'm through with it all. I put my all into this business. And that's that. So uh move on to uh Brianna her husband he is out of surgery and doing good uh sounds just about like cancer free and basically you know this is great she should be celebrated now she can get up and leave him but only to find out that he is having short-term memory loss he don't even remember cheating on her y'all he don't even remember cheating he think that she joking around and kidding and he's like you want to talk about me having uh cheating on you after i had brain surgery ha 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 she's like nah you did you did bro you, you really did so you know she's how she like, how could I leave him now when he can't even remember him cheating, you know, whatnot. So anyway, everybody ends up, you know, coming back, showing up at Bree's house. Perfect. E-Rock shows up and is like, oh, great. You know, boom, we got, you know, we got a venue. We're going back to San Diego. What? San Diego. First off, Brianna's like, uh, no, that's not what I signed up for. I signed up for one thing, for a one-time thing. I don't, don't even want to do San Diego again. Um, Naomi is like, nah, we, you know, are we even sure that we want to even be trying to do this, this group thing again? And Jill's like, nah, I need this. We need to do this. Of course, her and, uh, Valeria are, are, gung-ho for and now that things have transpired now the way they transpired and i've you know seen things i don't trust valeria how she got into the group now just has me rethink i mean obviously she she was fired from her old job but still i feel there's still something that underlining that she's not saying and that she possibly may still end up stabbing them in the back again but we shall see so um E-Rock and Naomi, of course, they always somehow end up in a corner or whatnot, and they're kind of both questioning each other's intentions. You know, E-Rock is asking her, like, what was that back, back, what was that back there about, you know, questioning the whole, you know, this group thing, and, you know, she's like, well, you know, why are you pushing this whole even thing so hard? Like, why are you trying to get us back to, you know, San Diego? And... He goes into, you know, like, it's good to be back together. And she shuts that all the way down. Like, this was a one-time thing. It wasn't even supposed to even go there. And, of course, when they find a corner, who's going to all of a sudden just pop up out of nowhere? Valeria. So, either way, it it goes... Um, 
E-Rock basically, you know, tells her that, you know, while, well, yeah, you know, we got this venue, but I ain't got the money if something is to happen or whatnot. So, Valeria's like, I can definitely scrunch up the cash. You know, again, we have to make this work. Like, the fact that that keeps having to be said, what's going on? Like, what's really happening, right? So, we end up back again rewinding back into history going back to 1998 or 1999 right and they finally got a deal and uh they finally got a deal he gives them bags bags with money and um Valeria is like clearly that you know stuff started to like you know happen then clearly once she got into the group they were having or doing something she's like thanks babe but then you see uh e-rock and naomi have eyes like what okay all right so boom suspicious stuff all right so like okay boom we're a family we got to be together forever then they roll to a scene where they're doing cribs from you know the beginning of the episode or whatnot but we get to see actually what was behind the scenes of that little snippet of their cribs episode they were not rocking together y'all they were basically in the shits um Brianna don't show up on to the stuff on time. Um, Naomi is basically, you know, trying to go solo. And, you know, the uh, the guy doing a crib show just makes mention of Jill having a little something, something by her nose. So basically, you know, at that point, they were going to shit. Shit was not good at that point. Like, the, the group were, was clearly having issues, right? So... All right, so boom, getting back to the present, and you see, um, you know, everybody's still at uh, um, Brianna. So I guess like Brianna's spot is just kind of like the meetup because I like, guess right, everybody is kind of like out of town or whatnot. So like Brianna's spot, I think is the only one that's technically in LA. So, um, baby girl is trying to escape to go to a darn party, little muffin, and they're like, what? what you doing like jill's like let let me have a talk with her and they kind of like have a a bonding moment and they kind of check each other and muffin was basically like saying to her like you really don't even have no room to even be trying to be checking with me when you over here living a whole scared life or whatnot you over here you know being scared or whatnot of coming out it's 2021 people are already out but jill is like like you over here just ready to ruin you know your whole life it's only going to be a matter of time you're going to this party the party's going to turn into you having one drink the party's going to turn into you having a line before you know it. you're going to wake up next to somebody you don't know a couple of days later or whatnot so they you know kind of like spat spat at each other walk away it was just so cute y'all it was like walk away and then they both like stop and they both come back at the same time like you're right i'm scared you're right i'm terrified like basically what's the name agree a muffin agrees that yeah she's gonna go ahead and go back to uh rehab and jill's gonna try to go on you know get her life together she's gonna try to figure out who she is you know now that she's uh come out so E-Rock, you know, lets them know that their show has sold out, you know, gratefully after, you know, everything, everything's basically just going good. The show has sold out and, um, you get to kind of as well see a bond between E-Rock and, uh, Brianna. They have a moment where Brianna's watch, just looking at her kids, you know, be her kids. He's just basically talking about how blessed she is or, or whatnot. And, you know, she compares <laughs> life to some crazy, you know, some crazy naked and survived or something like that. Some TV show that she's watching. And it's nice to kind of see like that he has a different dynamic, you know, with, uh, you know, just, just with some of the other people. It looks like that they have just some type of brotherly, sisterly um, bond. But not before we go back to the present, back to the past real quick. This time we're 2001 and we are looking at valeria's commercial for her butter pecan perfume and also as we're watching it naomi is watching it as well in the past in 2021 and e-rock comes in and she's like are you still messing with her like how does she you know if she get in perfume bottles and she's got rolls royces or whatnot like how how, how is this this even possible and e-rock is like that shouldn't even matter we're not even together what do you want from me 
I wanted you. You were the only person that I wanted. Yes, y'all. He, this whole thing between them, Naomi fault. <laughs> he was like, I wanted you. From the moment, you know, you rapped, I wanted you. And you were basically the one who decided that you wanted to keep us a secret or whatnot. And which he respected her reasoning. You know, Naomi was just like, if it would have came out that, you know, that if I would have came out saying that we were together, like, I would have basically never been respected. I would have been basically seen as I got, you know, the label simply because we were together, not because of my, you know, raw talents. And he's like, cool, but that's over now. We're here. So what's up? She still left my boy in the dust. She goes back to her original question of, are you messing with her? And he confirms, yes. <sighs> so, that seems like that was probably like the beginning of the ending with them. Because she goes and she runs to Cameron and like, I need you. I need somebody. Come on, boo. Open arms. He lets her right on in. <laughs> All right? So, getting back to the present, um... Naomi calls her daughter, just telling her about, you know, the deal that they don't want her to be her. It, you know, it wasn't right for her. Basically, she didn't get the deal. And her daughter's like, you know, kind of like checking her like, so what was all this for then? You were away from me for years just for you now to give up? Like, nah, you need to go back and you need to make it work. You need to get that deal, right? So she drops everything and, you know, has a little moment of reflection, drop, drops everything, and she goes to the exec's house and basically starts bringing it down on his front lawn, y'all, on his front porch. Like, it reminded me, this show reminds me of Stars, actually. It reminds me of Stars, um, <laughs> which I absolutely loved. I freaking love Stars. I hate the way it ended. Um, but, yeah, so, like, literally, she giving ballads. Like, it was a good two, three minutes of her just giving voice or whatnot, like, performing for this man. So it seems like he, you know, agreed to go ahead and possibly go ahead and give her the deal, um, which he does. He does. He go ahead and, you know, agrees to sign her, but there's a clause in her contract. She can't perform with nasty bitches, Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Like, what? Like, and so now, you know, she's looking like, like, what in the world? Because they're going to be doing, you know, they definitely confirmed they have a show. So now, you know, Cameron's like, but, you know, this is what you want. This is always what you want. And so she's at a crossroad as far as, like, you know, what they're going to do. And boom, you can see that it's clearly carrying into her because they have rehearsals. And she's clearly not checked in she's not checked in the rehearsals you know she's you know asking them like again are we sure like that we you know should be doing this that we you know want to do this or whatnot and then y'all it gets down to the nitty gritty we get our last recap yep the last recap right and last by recap blast of the past of 2001 and Naomi's like broke we broke how we broke like all this you know like type stuff um you know like she's like we shouldn't be broke we made this type of money I want to see a contract Valeria is like you know you don't need to see no contract you know we've been basically scamming you and getting over on you this whole time for what basically because of the type of deal you know with his deal they it covers publishing. I don't. I, I don't know. So something with publishing. Basically, th their money is getting ramped. They while they was basically focusing on being artists, she was more focused on you know not being an artist and getting her hustle on. So that's why she's she's still good, and everybody else is the way they are. But she's like, you know, I knew it was a bad deal, but you know, that's why I made sure that I was okay, that I was good or whatnot, and you know, but. While she's like, while the other girls are like, well, boom, we want to be out. They realize they really can't be out. They don't, they haven't seen the contract. They didn't see the contract. They don't know what it's going to look like if they decide to just leave. So they're scared to walk. They go ahead and do the performance, which now makes sense as to why in the beginning she was like, well, nah, y'all, we're not doing this. And she was looking at her shady-wise because right before that performance is when they found out that her and Iraq had been shady, shady deals, and boom, 
either way, she couldn't stand for it, and she decided to go ahead and end it. So, we, we're back to the present. We're at the show. Everybody is, you know, showing up for the show, but there's no Naomi, right? As they're gearing up, but kind of like getting ready for the show, uh, we're kind of like getting recaps into kind of like you know again what what they what they're dealing with on their on their personal end. You know, Bree is you know confused as far as like how she's supposed to you know move forward, uh, with her husband. He's back home, but he has short memory loss. He don't even remember cheating. Um. Jill, you know, you see her, she's standing up to her parishioners, you know, like, y'all not gonna judge me, yes, I'm a rapper, yes, I'm gay, yes, this, 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 this is my church, I'm gonna come here whether y'all like it or not. Now, mind you, they're gearing up for this performance, but there is no explicit lyrics. Where is she? Where is she? Is she gonna show up? Yes, y'all, she shows up, and... While she shows up and we see her recap, Cameron is at her door asking her, so who is JoJo dad? Boom, mic drop. And I'm going to end it there because, of course, that's where it ended. So catch us back here next week. Like the video if you liked it, of course. Comment, let me know what you thought of this week's episode. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see y'all next week.